I had a dream last night that I was a burrito in a microwave oven. And I wondered, what's it like to be a burrito in the microwave oven? Let's see. Apparently, it's a disco. Hi, I'm Zeke Kossover of the Teacher Institute at the Exploratorium, and we have an activity that will let you see the invisible microwaves inside of a microwave oven. So as you saw the panel moving around inside the microwave oven, you saw that the neon bulbs went on and off. That's because the microwaves are unevenly distributed inside the microwave oven. It's uh, more powerful in some places and less powerful in others. And that's why we have to have the platform to turn your food around so that you won't get hot spots in your food that'll get overcooked and other spots in your food which will remain cold. The Microwaves energize those neon bulbs. A microwave is a kind of light. It has a frequency of a few billion hertz, and it drives charged particles inside the microwave oven. And so they drive the charged particles inside the neon bulbs, and that causes them to light up. The microwaves, though, can also drive the charged particles inside of your food, um, both uh, electrons that can be forced around as well as um, polar molecules like water or sugar. And I can show you that in action here by taking this glass of water and putting it in with the grid inside the microwave oven. And we'll turn it on again. And you can see that the grid is not as thoroughly illuminated as it was the first time around. And the reason for that is, is that the water was heating up and as the water was heating up, it was using up some of the energy that would have otherwise illuminated the neon bulbs. We can show this even more by putting an even fuller glass of water inside. Oh, and this water is getting a little bit warm as well. Now we have the full glass of water in there, and you'll see that the neon indicators are even less illuminated than they had been before. And that's because the water is absorbing even more of the microwaves because there's more water. And that actually might cause you to ask yourself a question like, why does the microwave oven heat your food in the first place? We said a moment ago that microwaves are this very high frequency light, about two and a half billion times per second. And that's a changing electromagnetic field. So anything that's a charged particle inside that field will, f field will feel a push back and forth. Uh, water is polar. It has a positive side and a negative side. And so it's constantly being trying to be moved back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, two and a half billion times per second. And consequently, there's essentially friction in between all these water molecules that are pushing them back and forth. And that causes the water to get hot and then consequently anything that's next to it to get hot as well. What's interesting though is if those charged particles can't actually move, then they can't absorb the microwaves and they can't take the energy out of the microwaves and get hotter. So a frozen burrito, for example, um, has these same charged particles, has these polar particles of water, but they're frozen in place. Literally, they're ice and so they can't move and so they can't absorb the microwaves very well and so they don't get very hot. Um, what you have to do then is, is you have to let some water melt on the outside. That can get the microwaves, and then that water can then melt the ice so the next bit can also absorb the microwaves. And that's why there's a special defrost mode in your oven so that it turns on and off the microwave so that it'll absorb some microwaves on the outside water, let it conduct to the next bit, turns the microwave back on as more ice melts to become water, and so on. Let's look, though, more about how this uh, panel does its job. So this panel consists of a large group of uh, what are called neon indicators. They are very small bulbs. They're usually used to show whether or not um, a light switch has been turned on. They have two small metal plates separated uh, with neon gas in between, and the microwaves 
force the electrons inside those metal plates to jump across from one plate to the other. And when they do that, they illuminate the neon gas inside of these little bulbs. Um, these are not LEDs. Um, they would get fried. They can't handle the high voltages generated by the microwave. And you could actually use like incandescent bulbs, but they also don't like the high voltages and they will very quickly burn up as well. So these neon bulbs are perfect for the task at hand. In a little bit, I'll show you how to make one of these yourself. I want to talk a little bit about the safety and about how these work. Um, each one of these little bulbs does get warm from the microwaves in it. Um, and so if you let this run for too long, you will eventually set the acrylic on fire. So don't do that. Um, but uh, microwaves are actually pretty safe on the inside. People do set food on fire from time to time. So they're covered in metal on the inside. Um, I wouldn't go crazy, but you don't have to be completely panicked about putting something that's not food inside a microwave. And, and that reminds me, too, it's actually okay to put metal inside of a microwave oven. In fact, the entire inside of the microwave oven is metal. Um, the problem is, is that pointy pieces of metal um, make sparks. So the driving force of the uh, microwaves moves electrons around. And if you have something that's pointy inside the microwave, you'll drive a spark across that gap. And that spark can be very hot and can set other things on fire. Um, so you probably don't want to make very many sparks inside your microwave unless you're doing experiments in a safe and controlled manner with fire extinguishers and all those other appropriate safety devices. When I'm using this in my class, the thing that I spend most of my time talking about is how the motion of the electrons, that uh, a light, an electromagnetic field, is a driving force of electrons and a driving magnetic field as well. Um, and this really shows that very quite clearly because the forced motion of the electrons is what makes the neon glow. It also shows conservation of energy in a way that's not always obvious to students. We usually spend our time in our conservation of energy unit talking about falling objects and things like that. But here we get to bring it back up again. Water absorbs the microwaves. The energy of those microwaves goes into heating the water. And so that energy isn't available for lighting the bulbs. Um, and if you have more water, it's even less available for lighting the bulbs. We don't usually notice conservation of energy when you're cooking things in the oven. But when you cook things in a, and that is in a conventional oven, but when you cook things in a microwave oven, you might have noticed that if you double the number of things in the microwave oven, you have to run it for twice as long. Um, that's a complete conservation of energy. It takes energy to cook things, and if you have twice as much, you need twice as much energy. Um, conventional ovens work differently. They have lots of, you usually have more energy than you need, so you don't notice the overloading of the oven. But microwave ovens are very efficient because they have just usually just the amount of energy you need to cook the objects. When I uh, use all this stuff in class, um, my students are usually quite surprised to see something that's just a common device that they've seen in their homes being used for science. And that's one of the best parts about doing this is that it helps inspire the curiosity to investigate um, a common device in their house and a way to see something that's otherwise invisible to see. Um, microwaves are a kind of light, but it's not a kind of light that our eyes can detect. So it's important to come up with instruments for us to be able to detect things that are otherwise invisible. And lots of scientific devices are designed to do that, to bring the invisible and make it visible. And this is just one of those examples. If you want to see where the microwaves are inside your microwave oven, you can build this neon panel that we've been using. Let me show you how that's done. First, you're going to need these little neon indicator lamps. They're sometimes called neon bulbs. They are rarely sold at hardware stores. You're going to have to purchase them online. And you can get them in 50 and 100 packs, so they're not terribly expensive. They're usually used in light switches to know that they've been turned on. Sometimes they're called pilot lights for that reason. They come with these long wire legs on them for wiring them into a circuit, but we don't need them. Uh, in fact, they will cause sparks inside the oven, so we want to turn them, we'll want to cut those off so we can just snip them off with a pair of scissors or wire cutters. You just want to cut them relatively close to the glass. Now you're going to put them into a grid shape um, and we'll use a piece of acrylic to hold the grid. You want to get the acrylic so that it's as big as possible inside your microwave oven, but it still has to be able to get in and out through the doors. And different microwave ovens are different sizes, so you'll have to size it to the oven you're planning on using it with. You'll want to cut or drill holes into the acrylic. 
Um, the size that you'll need is a little bit complicated because different sets of neon bulbs are different size. My particular ones are about 730 seconds. You want to put it so that it will friction fit into the hole, so it'll hold itself in place there. You might think that it would be better to let it slip all the way through, but they won't stay if you do that. So you just want it a little bit undersized. Um, when you drill the holes with them, though, there are different kinds of bits that you can use. You can use a standard bit, but if you can find a plastic cutting bit, it's a lot easier to drill into the plastic. A standard bit will grab the plastic and try to pull it out of your hand, and sometimes that can cause the plastic rather to, uh, to crack. Whereas if you can get a plastic bit, they've cut that part off, um, and so it'll drill more smoothly in. When you're making the grid on it, the plastic usually comes with a coating on top of it, and you can then literally just draw on that coating the grid first. But you'll notice that my grid's a little wavy and a little wonky. That's totally fine. It'll still work completely well. Once you've drilled all the holes in it, you can put in the bulbs. If you're lucky, they'll friction fit and hold by themselves pretty well. But if you're going to be moving them around very much, you can always put a bead of hot glue right next to them to hold it in place better. And you want to use hot, hot glue for it, not low temperature hot glue, because they get hot in the microwave oven and we don't want to melt it out. Once you're done with putting all the bulbs into it, then you need feet to hold it up. And you know, there are a lot of things you can use, but I found these little pieces of plastic that are used for signs. You can glue them on uh, with hot glue to make feet for it. Once you put all the bulbs in and glued on the feet, you're really done. And you'll get a grid that looks something like this. Now, you can actually make more than one grid and put it in the microwave oven so that you can see what's happening in three dimensions. You should try different things. You should experiment. Uh, but please don't burn your house down.